Alright, got a nice fire going and I'm going to be doing some more musky fishing this weekend. Now my musky fishing needs a lot of improvement. The musky innovation shell invader I was using, Tennessee Shad Color, lost its tail on that musky that I caught. If you look at the slow motion of that video, you can see the tail flying right off of the bait. Since then, I bought another tail and went musky fishing again and got two follows and that's it. Then at the end of the trip, I broke the lip on this one. Now I did super glue the tail in here and you can see it is not going to come back out, this brand new tail. I probably have to play with this for a while to be able to get this out to use as a spare tail if I ever need it. I also made a mod to the hook. The first muskie that followed this lure might have been hooked if I had the hook like this. It's just a wire, an o-ring, shrink wrap, and the original hook. And it does not detract from the bait swimming. So what I've done, I've bought a new one from Big Fish Outfitters. And I'm going to rig it like this one and show you how I rig it and then go fishing and hopefully catch a fish. Musky fishing is the fish of 10,000 casts, so I don't know if I'm going to catch one or not. Hopefully there will be a 40 inch musky so I can get that last tarp for Master Angler Level 2. This is what I want to achieve. Just be careful taking the tail out. This piece right here was missing on this one when the fish knocked it off. I'm still going to glue this in here. Got a little split ring tool to get the hooks off. Last thing I want to do is get a hook in the hand. First hook off. Second hook off. This is 40 thousandths wire that I'm going to use. I'm here at Milton Hill Bill's crib and he's got thicker wire. When I tried the thicker wire on this one it was incredibly difficult to twist. So I'm just going to use this wire. It's still pretty solid wire and with the shrink wrap it should be able to handle the teeth of a muskie pretty easily. I've seen guys twist it on here like what I've done. I've twisted it here and then used the machine on this side. But a crimp sleeve should work too. And it'll make life a lot easier. Put it through the back one. Put it around here. It's going to have to bend a little bit. It is pretty sturdy wire. It's hard to get around there. <laughs> like a little spring. Just have to work with it until you get it right. There we go. I'm not going to worry about this just yet. I'm going to try to get this crimped. As you can see on the twisted one, I make sure it's on the back end. It's on the back end of this loop. And then crimp it down. Or twist it. If you were twisting it on here, you don't want to do this. You want to twist it on here first and then feed it through the back loop. Okay, and it's crimped on there now. Now we got to work on the back. I'm going to straighten it. Then I'm going to put it on Billy's wire bender and make a loop here in the back. Okay. Want to get too long? No. It looks good. I think that's good. There we go. Got a loop for the hook. I just got to cut this piece off and straighten it. I'm going to get my heat shrink. It's a little bit long, so I'm going to cut it, match it to the other one. And the way I did it, I actually put it on the hook shank. There we go. After a lot of work, I got it on there. I'm going to try to get it like this. So the tail is over the hooks and everything. Let's slide this over here. I think this one's further back than my other one, but that'll be fine. Leave a comment what you think if this is too far back. Take a little bit, but it will get hard and it'll be hopefully perfect. Then I'm going to glue the tail in. Just using cheap super glue from Walmart. I think it's a dollar or dollar fifty for three or four of these. It's what I used on this tail and it's impossible to pull that tail out. And this tail doesn't have this middle piece because it broke. Don't need too much of this. Okay, I got it glued into place. Be careful with super glue. It will pull off the actual paint. It may have been a good idea just to leave the tail on and super glue it while it's actually still in the bait. I'm going to let this dry, get the other hook on it, and I'm going to take it fishing. 
Right here is the final product. Let's see if this thing will swim. Yeah. Swimming like it should. So I'm gonna see if I can catch a musky here. It's only about 20 degrees out today, so it should be a good day of musky fishing. Oh man, the wind knot. Okay, now that I got the wind knot out, let's try this again. My eyes are getting full of uh, ice. Doing a little bit of makeshift trolling now. Having some issues with the throttle, it's probably frozen on the boat. So I'm hoping I get slammed on the troll on this uh, shallow invader. It's supposed to be a really good trolling bait. Well, we finally got the throttle unfrozen and moved upriver a little bit. I did get a troll uh, quite a bit of water while waiting for it to unfreeze and didn't catch anything. So maybe this is where the muskie are at. Maybe I'll get a big striper hit this. Or another big bass. If you check out this i-card, caught a nice bass here on a chatterbait. The bait's still performing good too. The super glue's holding. I've had the hook go into the tail a couple of times. Overall, still looking good. A fish of 10,000 casts. What? Got a musky? Wow. Wow, that thing is enormous. He ate that full size Jake. Triple D is what it is. Oh, it's a triple D? Yeah. That's a dark one, ain't it? Yeah. Man, that is a awesome smallmouth. There he goes. That's good though, we got the skunk out of the boat. That's the fish that matters. That right there was a trophy sized smallmouth too. We didn't measure it though. <laughs> well if there's more of that size they might hit my bait. That'd be nice. We musky fishing and catch a trophy sized smallmouth instead. I got something. Nice. Whoa, that's a huge one. Holy cow. Wow. Man. That's a 50 Andrew. Wow. He didn't even fight that hard. That's not a 50, it's a 48. Hand me those cards. I gotta do this quick. Yeah. He's a big one. Wow. You got him? Yeah. 52. Yeah, 52. We'll call it 52. Man. You, you wanna take a picture? Big fish. Might you release it? That's a huge fish. Big fish. 
I was just 50 when I seen it. Humpback, really old fish. There he goes, swimming off. That is a huge fish. Congrats. Fist bump. Congrats. That basically makes me master angler level two. That was one of my goals this year and People got it. Their whole life for a fish like that. And that was on the Tennessee Shad Shallow Invader that I had modified. Okay, I'm gonna catch my breath and uh, let this sink in and get my bait out of the net and fish some more. Now that was an awesome muskie. Now before I do my thoughts about muskie fishing and my attempt to get a trophy muskie, let me do some shout outs. I want to shout out Milton Hill Bill first. He's taken me muskie fishing, he's let me break one of his baits, and he's allowing me to use some of his camera equipment so I can get used to using a normal camera to film with. Without him, this probably would have never happened. I also want to give thanks to Cody Daniels, Thomas Marlowe, and Corey Allen. These guys took me out on their boats muskie fishing, and I learned new things from all of them. And it was on Cody's new boat that I caught that 52 incher. Now I want to do two more honorable mentions here. Dylan, Dylan, I don't know how to say his name. He went muskie fishing with me and Cody and me and Corey a couple of times. He's a really great dude to get to know. And for some information, Mark Cooper gave me some information about muskies. Without all these people, I would be using a dock demon right now. Now my thoughts on muskie fishing. This was the hardest Tennessee Angler Recognition Program trophy fish that I have fished for. I think it's been about six months that I've been targeting muskie. All I had to do was catch something over 40 inches. And I do believe that I picked the hardest area to catch a muskie over 40 inches. From what I'm told by these guys, the river, the muskies are spread out. While on the lake, muskies tend to gather in certain areas. And on the lake, they get bigger. The state record was caught on the lake. And I can guarantee you, there's more state records in the lake itself. Now, this muskie, I think, was a complete fluke. It looked like it was sick old and dying. It had a humpback, the complexion was really off for the fish, and we got it to the boat in 30 seconds and it had like no life. I think it went either through the turbines of the dam or fell through the spill gates of the dam. Either or, it got injured. And if a big fish like that is being scared off the main lake, you can just imagine the size of the fish that are up there. Now Cody and a couple of others say that that fish probably did survive us catching it and releasing it. And I know the video wasn't that great. I was very concerned with getting that fish back in the water and released as soon as possible just because it didn't look healthy. So hopefully it did survive. But this has been one amazing experience. I'm still going to continue to musky fish. I know Cody has the musky bug right now and he wants to catch musky 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 all the time. And Billy likes to catch musky as well on his off time when he's not striper guiding. So I will have future musky videos. However, I will continue to go up the ladder for the Tennessee Angler Recognition Program. This muskie has made me Master Angler Level 2. If I catch five more different fish, that's Master Angler Level 3. So like a channel catfish, largemouth bass, yellow perch. Those are some of the fish that I have not registered trophies yet with. And there's a lot more. I will link the Tennessee Angler Recognition Program in the description below. As always, thank you for watching. Please give me a like and subscribe and watch me go up the Tennessee Angler Recognition Program ladder.